Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and it's a very hot day, so you have to excuse my uh, lack of um, proper attire. Um, it's boiling. It is so hot. So hot, in fact, that things are dropping like they're hot. We've got a trailer, a fac, a steam page. We've got all the things. Well, all the things. Some things. We've got some things. Uh, so we're going to talk about some things. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, go see the trailer, because there will be spoilers in the blog post, but we will be looking at the trailer at the end so you can get my reactions, and I can point at everything with the added context of the FAQ and my own knowledge and, uh, I don't know, anything else we think of when we're looking at it. Um, so it should be fun. So if you haven't seen the trailer, go see the trailer, because, like I said, spoilers ahead uh, but do come right back good so uh, Ben Barrett once again having fun with his blog posts uh, he's been having a lot of fun lately good old Ben so uh, Total War Warhammer 2 the silent and the fury fact or FAQ if you want to get fancy there are plenty Q's that will be aid F get on with it Janet so the silence of the fury is the next final and beast Legendary Lord's Pack for the Total War Warhammer 2. That's how that's said. The clamorous horde of Torox's beastmen will meet the deadliest lizardmen Oxyotl can command. Only one can claim victory as Torox rampages his way across the land to fulfill a new pact with the Chaos Gods, and Oxyotl desperately tries to save all living things by stopping him. How about a little trailer? No, no, you've seen that already. We'll go over that later. So, bad, bad Ben. We're not doing it. So, each brings a host of new units, unique powers, and a brand new campaign to the world of Warhammer 2. Naturally, they sit alongside a hefty, uh, a hefty free update. I feel like it should be heifer of an update, because cow puns. Um, because cow puns are a, uh, are a, are a rare medium well done. It's a steak, steak joke. Steak jokes. Uh, so, which includes a quite awesome surprise. The Silence and the Fury includes two unique legendary lords leading their own factions. Oxyotl, he who hunts unseen for the Lizardmen. Torox, the brass bull leading the Beastmen. Uh, powerful new units and heroes for both the Lizardmen and the Beastmen, including the mighty Jabberslythe. That was a awesome moment in the trailer, which you have seen because I warned you. I told you, Kevin. I'm assuming there's someone called Kevin watching, but maybe not. I'm just gonna, just gonna hope for the best. Hi, Kevin. Uh, so, and other monsters for the Beastmen. Uh, we have seen other monsters too, which again, we'll look into uh, when we get there. Flying snakes, blind monsters, and new skins for the Lizardmen. <laughs> there are indeed. Uh, a unique campaign narrative for both factions with special mechanics on the campaign map. There is also a massive free update coming at the same time which includes a number of elements you'll learn more about below and over the next 24 hours. For more info, screenshots and to pre-order now, head, uh, head on over to Steam or ideally you could go over to nexus.gg slash Janet and buy your Steam key from me so I, I get, you know, rewarded for all this work that I do. Yeah, think about it. Think about it, Kevin. So, Silence and the Fury basics. When is the Silence and the Fury's release date? The Silence and the Fury will launch on July the 14th. So, uh, only a couple of weeks away now. And uh, is there a pre-purchase discount? Yep, 10% off until launch day. Uh, really, until launch day? That's strange. Usually it's a week after launch as well, isn't it? Or is that just with the main releases? I know they did the pre-order bonuses for a week after. It's been so long since I've had to buy a Total War game. I know, us privileged few. Um, yeah, yeah well. Uh, Silence and the Fury content. What is the Silence and the Fury? The Silence and the Fury is the latest and final Lord pack for Total War Warhammer 2. It's a shame it's the last one, but like... It had to end some point, right? We've got Total War Warhammer 3 to look forward to, so, you know, one of them had to be the last one. Uh, and this is it. So including two new legendary lords, new units, and a host of other changes and additions. What is a Lord Pack? Lord Packs are our standard DLC for Total War Warhammer 2, and add two new lords for two factions, giving them unique campaign starts and goals, as well as unique lord abilities. It gives you two new campaigns to play in both Vortex and Mortal Empires, by that it means that there's two new campaigns in the Vortex campaign and there's two new campaigns in the Mortal Empires campaign. Uh, just to make that clear. So it's four new campaigns, although two of them will be, you know, the pairs will be quite similar because you're playing as the same thing and to play anyway, whatever. Plus, you'll, uh, you know the drill by now. Okay, no need to... No need to get in a fuss. So, plus, you will face off against these lords in your future campaigns, even if you don't buy the DLC. Who are... 
the new legendary lords in The Silence and the Fury. For the Beastmen comes Torox the Fury, a nigh invulnerable doom bull with but one weak spot at his neck, the only part of his body not covered in brass. Taunted and beguiled by the Chaos Gods, he believes uh, he can finish his ascendance and become unstoppable if he simply completes a ritual to Chaos and lets it flood into the world. True or not, he gathers the herd to find the Heart of the Dark, completing other minor rituals to locate it and begin his work. Oxyotl, the Silence, is a skink and Lizardman, Lord, stealthy and with the ability to sense chaos. Torox's rituals and plan has garnered Oxyotl's attention, and he knows he must stop the Beastmen if the world is to remain relatively peaceful. With a focus on stealth, Oxyotl must revive sight and sanctums in secret places of the world and gain the power needed to stop Torox. What new units are coming in the Silence and the Fury? The Silence and the Fury will include new units for the Beastmen and Elizabeth factions. On the Beastmen side, we have the Doom Bull. So, great that we finally have a Minotaur Lord. I think that's really fun. Doom Bull, probably the most commonly modded in Lord, uh, honestly, in the game. So, uh, Doom Bull Lord sounds great. The most ferocious Minotaurs ever born. They're powerful, resilient, and Day's opponents in combat. Uh, Day's opponents, huh? Interesting. Interesting. War Gore Hero. So, uh, basically, a Best Gore Hero. Um, I mean, it's a war gore, not a best of gore, but it's it, similar vibe. You know, it's it's not a minotaur, it's a it's a gore, but the best one. But not the best one, because that would be the beast lord, this is a war gore. Anyway, there's a war gore. So carrying a mace and shield, they are brutal leaders for their kin, improving their fighting capabilities. Next up, we have the tusk gore chariot. New chariot, uh, also in the trailer. So beast-drawn chariots with vanguard deployment. So pretty cool, that. Pretty cool. Um, I, I have... Uh, notice that they look, they just have like a stark, like a stark resemblance to um, Alf, which really just does it for me. So next up we have the Gorgon, who is of course a monster, a giant and mutated minotaurs, deceptively fast and perfect for taking on larger enemies. So the Gorgon of course has four arms, it's very very scary, uh, big old scary monster. And then of course we have the Javaslith, that is a uh, famous Famously, it was once mentioned um, on the on the Total War Reddit or maybe in the forums. Uh, one of the Creative Assembly employees mentioned that it would take uh, <laughs> an entire Charlemagne um, to create Charlemagne, being the Charlemagne DLC for uh, Total War Attila. They're saying the cost of it, you know, it'd be like an entire Charlemagne. <laughs> so it started the meme of uh, how many Charlemagnes is this with this cost or this cost, you know. Uh, whenever people talk about new units and the possibility of new units, it's like, oh, but come on, how many Charlemagnes would that cost? Well, the Jabba Slith is what started that meme, and we've got it. They've spent the Charlemagnes, guys. How many Charlemagnes did it cost? So, really cool, anyway. So, powerful, horrifying fusion of Toad, Sludge, Drake, and Insect. Area of effect attacks, debuffs, and worth as much as a Charlemagne. Terrific. So, and for the Lizardman. Uh, Skink Oracle Hero, so a spellcaster with access to a unique selection of spells from various laws. Um, so, so cool. I've really wanted this because, I mean, the idea of having a giant stompy troglodon friend um, is wonderful, especially something so versatile because the troglodon is a ranged weapon, but it's also a stompy monster. Um, you know, that can obviously do damage. It's very quick, but it's also a spellcaster, so you've got this amazing. Uh, hybridization of a bunch of different roles in one, which I think is the coolest thing. So uh, I imagine they could be quite expensive in multiplayer, but uh, yeah, who knows. So Chameleon Stalkers, Infantry, so new Chameleon um, uh, Skink units here. So Ambush units with an Explosive Dart First Strike ability. Very cool stuff. So um, a melee Chameleon Skink, basically, but with a, with a first strike with explosive darts. That sounds great to me. And I was very concerned that it would just be, like when I saw the picture, I thought it would just be chameleon skinks, but better again. I just thought it would be just another direct upgrade on the skink skirmisher branch. You know, you'd have skink skirmishes, then chameleon skinks, then even more chameleon skinks that are even better. I just thought it'd be a direct upgrade, which would have been really, really boring. But uh, this doesn't sound boring, so, you know. Next up we have a coatl. 
which is a flying monster, uh, which is very, very cool. Some of you guys might have noticed it in the teaser trailer that they posted. Uh, in the Skulls event, it was right in the distance. Um, so very cool that that uh, little tease wasn't just sort of generic, uh, for, you know, ambient uh, fauna, I suppose. So that's really cool. So highly intelligent, very scary, and able to hide their allies and bring forth lightning with their magic. Awesome. And a Trogdodon, of course, which the Skink um, Oracle uh, rides around on. So... You know, it had to be their troglodon. So, poison dealing monsters that can also shoot their venomous spit, which is effective against larger targets. There are also a selection of new regiments of renown coming to both factions. So, what are the unique mechanics for Oxyotl and Torox? Torox, as well as benefiting from the Beastman redesign detailed below, rampages through the land with the ability to rapidly move from battle to battle. Defeating enemies, raising cities, and other acts of wanton destruction give him momentum, which allows him to rampage even further. A single turn for Torox can encompass many battles, raising of settlements, and blood flowing. His other powers all enhance this, creating more and more power in a region as he serves the slaughter. He begins in the Obsidian Peaks region, at the western edges of the New World. Oxyotl is a stealthier but no less dangerous foe. He exploits and develops the silent sanctums that exist around the world, and his intimate knowledge of the machinations of chaos allow him to locate and battle threats to the natural order of things regularly. This makes him extremely mobile on the map, and he is never caught trespassing in enemy territory. Uh, that's really cool, because um, if, if he needs to be everywhere, but takes uh, trespassing penalties, then that's just, that would suck. So that's an interesting uh, um, mechanic that he, he can't be spotted trespassing because he's just that sneaky. You know, he knows all the secret routes through the world. So I love it. As a natural enemy of chaos and the greatest of living skinks, he gains, oh, oh, poor Tehenuin. <laughs> Aww. So he gains bonus experience fighting the former and is an expert at leading the latter. Uh, kin with any climate, that's cool. So, no climate penalties. Uh, Oxyotl begins his campaign in the cold north of the Deadwood. Uh, so up in uh, Nagarond or Nagaroth, I always get the continent and the faction confused, but you know the one. Um, more details on both Legendary Lords and the unique mechanics, as well as the big updates coming to Beastman and Dwarfs will be detailed in the coming weeks, leading up to launch on July the 14th. Which um, makes a lot of sense, because um, I will be... Uh, playing a Oxyotl campaign uh, which will be kicking off on the 6th of this month so stay tuned for that hooray I can announce things um, and I'll announce the other thing in a second so silence and fury free content what's in the free patch alongside the silence and the fury bunch of free stuff so there will be two major parts of the free patch that lands with the DLC updates for the beastman which you know expected uh, very expected and very necessary and smaller but still significant changes to one more faction you'll find out uh, about tomorrow. The Beastmen update will keep their destructive horde nature but allow them to temporarily settle down in a region around a herdstone. This forms a central theme of Torox's campaign to appease chaos but all Beastmen factions will be able to interact with them. Once the land around a herdstone has been raised and harvested for all the slaughter it can offer, the beastmen will move on, leaving true destruction in their wake. We'll see you back here tomorrow, where we'll talk about the new dwarf legendary lord, mercenary reinforcements, and a new beastman hero. So I can confirm that the new dwarf legendary lord is being announced tomorrow, and uh, that'll coincide with me being able to um, play it. So you will you will see that campaign kicking off tomorrow. I can't reveal who it is yet, only that I'm playing it tomorrow. So um, I might have to be a bit tricksy with the thumbnail. I'm sure you've seen it by now. I would probably set it to premiere. So um, yeah, you will see you will see a mystery thumbnail uh, with a mystery dwarf. On it, so that will be kicking off tomorrow, uh, which is the uh, uh, on the on the second. Uh, that will be beginning. So on the second of this month, the second of July, uh, there will be the Dwarf campaign, and then on the sixth, Oxyotl will begin uh, with a small Dwarf hiatus, with a Dwarf Dwarf hiatus, um, while we play Oxyotl for a bit until the embargo, where I can play everything to my heart's content for you guys. So on the ninth, um, it'll be like two episodes a day. From then on so um should be good fun should be a lot of fun i can't wait 
I can't wait. It's going to be a busy couple of weeks for me. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to give you guys uh, a bunch of what you want to see. So I can't wait. Um, so obviously I'm doing a lot of spiel here, but we haven't looked at the trailer yet, which is something that we're going to do now. Okay, so everything up to this point has just been the stuff that we've seen in the uh, the teaser trailer already. Um, and now the real, the real trailer is about to kick off. And so, of course, that was the Jabba Slythe, uh, which is awesome. And these are the Chameleon Stalkers that we are now seeing. So you could see them uh, shooting their blowpipes. Uh, and... And that's evidence of the explosive ammunition they have, you know, as they're charging in. They get these explosive shots in, which is very, very cool. And, uh, my God, the Jabba Slythe looks amazing. <laughs> And so uh, let's 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 put that back a bit. Actually, uh, do, 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 do. here we go. Uh, right in the background, you can see the gorgon beginning to charge in. So that's our first uh, first view of the gorgon. Torox taking you know front and center frame, obviously. And back to Oxyotl with his chameleon stalkers. And here we get a selection of troglodons. That's right, a selection. So in the distance we can see uh, one of them is being ridden. That's the Skink Oracle riding their troglodon. There's other troglodons that aren't being ridden, which means that there's a feral troglodon version. And of course we have um, this one right in the front, which is the Regiment of Renown troglodon. And you also saw there, there was evidence of their missile attacks, you know, firing that, uh, like, acid snot. And uh, here we have the Coatl has just come into frame. And also in the background, you can see that we got a uh, bright red Gorgon over there. So there's the Regiment of Renown Gorgon as well. All right, cool stuff. So uh, we know that it's out on the on the fourteenth, obviously. Uh, you know, by now we just read an FAQ. Uh, so that's really cool stuff. So we saw some really amazing things in the trailer. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, so we do have some uh, information on the Regiment of Renown on the Steam page. So uh, for the Beastman, hang on. <laughs> Shush. So, for the Beastmen, we have uh, the Grog Hooves of Wolf's Run, which are a centigore with Throwing Axe uh, Regiment Renown, which come with Poison Attacks as well as Health Regeneration via their Drunken Bravado passive ability, which sounds rather good. We also have the uh, Vobagland Broodmother, which is a legendary Jabba Slythe that can sunder armor with regular attacks as well as via a powerful armor-piercing Vortex. Cool stuff indeed. Also, we have the Blood Brute Behemoth, a legendary Gorgon that deals more damage the lower the enemy's health is, making it a perfect monster slayer. Which sounds sick. Uh, also, for the Lizardmen, their three regiments of renown are the uh, Pale Death, which is a feral troglodon of great renown which grants itself and nearby friendlies melee buffs whenever it uses its fearsome primeval roar ability. So, that's kind of cool. 
Um, so, so it makes me think of like a fight or die for um, for a monster, which is which is good. Also, uh, <laughs> Geldblom's Terror. Uh, this feral carnosaur which we all know is is modelled after a T-Rex, uh, of legend will never rampage, and has the vanguard and strider abilities, making it the ultimate first strike monster hunter. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Geltblom. Uh, the Germans amongst you will tell you that that means Goldbloom. Goldbloom's terror happens to be a T-Rex. I let you piece the rest of that together. So, Spirit of Tepok, a legendary quattle, which can cast the Shield of Thorns and Banishment spells. Which uh, that sounds sick. So yeah, awesome. That's uh, that's everything. That's all the stuff. So remember uh, tomorrow, uh, or you know, if you're not watching this, you might be watching this tomorrow. Might be today for you guys. Either way, on the second um, of July, uh, it's currently the first, but on the second of July, um, there's going to be a Dwarf Legendary Lord campaign starting. The new Legendary Dwarf Lord. New Legendary Lord of the Dwarfs. That is starting uh, tomorrow. So look forward to that. Um, and also on the 6th, Oxyotl's campaign is going to start. Uh, and then on the 9th, it'll be um, you know, a couple episodes a day uh, minimum for all that stuff from the 9th. So pretty exciting stuff. It's going to be an awesome couple of weeks. And I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed hearing this news. I hope you're ex as excited as I am because I'm very excited. Um, all of it is shaping up to be really cool. And there's also some more things that are getting announced tomorrow which, uh, which I will try to cover as well. Um, I'm sure there'll be a blog post so I'll try and get that blog post out um, and some of it will be covered of course in, uh, in the, the video content. Uh, with the with the, the legendary dwarf lord tomorrow, so it should be cool, and hopefully you guys will uh, will turn up and and enjoy the show. It should be good. Uh, oh, also uh, one last shout out to uh, to nexus.gg slash Janet if you're looking to pre-order the game, or you might wait until tomorrow to have a look at you know what's on offer first uh, before you bother. So you know up to you, but keep it in mind because it does help the channel out and uh, it's it's at no additional expense to you guys. Just get a Steve key from that site, and yeah, it's all is well. I, I just get a kickback, so um, it's a very easy way to support. So okay, uh, comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, spin around on the spot three times, and do five star jumps. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.